I'm seriously attracted to the stuff in your trailer. How do you make money for nothing? Is it a trampoline or a bed? Well, if I guess so, we could have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Wow, what a retro-looking thing. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Oh, what have you got? They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... Are oh, they beautiful? A labour of love. Valuable. I've never seen anything like that. And hopefully saleable items. Martin, those are amazing. Thanks very much. If Sarah is successful, wow. then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £370? That's amazing. It's business as usual at the Wallyford Recycling Centre in East Lothian. The rubbish gets chucked in the skip, the big spiky roller thing squashes it flat, then it's gone forever. But here to save things from the squasher is the saviour of salvage, Sarah Moore. If anything lovely ends up under that, I'm going to be devastated, so I'm going to get busy, see what I can find. Sarah has special permission to seek out three unwanted items. Is it ending up in the skip? That she can unleash her imagination on and hopefully sell on for cash. I mean, who invented that? It's the stuff of nightmares. It was actually invented by Ian Squasherman, and I don't think he'd appreciate you saying that. Recycling centre regular Anne's arrived. The last time she met Sarah, her old blankets were up for grabs and Sarah transformed them into a collection of colourful cushions. But will she have any luck today? Oh, hi there. Sorry to bother you. I think that's the smallest suitcase I've ever seen at the recycling centre. Right. Isn't it a sweet one? <laughs> it is, yes, yes. It was actually my father's and it's been to Peru and back. Oh, really? I mean, I saw it and I thought about Paddington Bear and sandwiches, but was there a specific journey for it? Uh, our dad was a missionary, actually, before he became a minister. Yeah, so we lived there for about five years, in my formative years. So, you did? Yeah, so I was about 15 months when we travelled out by ship. Uh, so it took about three months to get to Peru. Uh, there were three of us, my mother and father, myself. There were five of us when we came back. Oh, fantastic. So, and is it something that's going to be thrown out today? Are you? Well, we kind of did, yes. We were uh, clearing out the flat after my brother's sudden death very recently. I'm sorry to hear about your, your brother. That sounds awful. I, I would love to see what can be done with it. If you don't mind me having it, I'd love to try and restore it or do something with it. Oh, that um, would be amazing. Can I come and find you and show you what's happened to it? Yes, that would be lovely. Lovely. Well, Super. I'll take that away and keep in touch. OK, thank you very much. Sarah's got her hands on a little but globe-trotting suitcase. Anne, are you pleased Sarah's taken an interest in it? It's quite heartwarming that uh, someone's going to do something with that that's a special little case. That's, that's great. It's a little bit careworn, but I think it is one of the most charming suitcases I've ever seen. I've got to see if something can be done with this. But which maker is Sarah entrusting to take this case on a trip to transform it? Mark Phillips, a.k.a. Horse. He's a thoroughbred tech head with the electrical know-how to make you go, wow. It's quite a nice thing what I do. I think I ended up doing it really uh, through my love of music. I enjoy fixing things, I enjoy overcoming challenges and problems, but I, I kind of, uh, I find it very satisfying to make something that, um, that sounds really good. It's really good uh, to reuse stuff. I, I kind of, I get a buzz out of doing it. I, I enjoy working on the old stuff just because it's so well made. Well, there's no technology in this old case, horse. Let's hope you don't short circuit when you see it.
That's one item secured with two still to find. What's in there, then? Have you found the fondue set? Sarah's checking out every single car in the hope of finding something special. Can you see the size of that one? The dog. There's a dog in the boot. They must have something really special with a guard dog that size. Lorna's arrived. But will Sarah sniff out anything worth saving in her boot? Hello there. I saw you flashing some amazing legs around there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. How do you do? Hi, I'm Lorna. Lorna, very nice to meet all three of you. <laughs> um, are you having a clear out? We are, yeah. So recently my grand passed away, so we're just clearing out her house. Um, and this was in the loft, and this is always just hidden in our bedroom. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your grand. Is there lots of things coming out of the house you need yeah, to clear? Yeah, so there's loads of stuff. Well, they are, they are lovely. It's one of those sort of Lloyd Loom chairs, isn't it? Yeah, it's... yeah. I loved it, because it's always got this wee hidey hole in the bottom, and I used to always hide stuff in it, and so did she. So that was where we always looked for hiding things. It was great. They are the kind of thing, particularly together, that it might be nice to see if we can um, find a new home for. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Would you mind? Yes, of course. That would be brilliant. Yeah. OK, lovely. Well, thank you ever so much. Thank I'll grab you. the table, and I'll be back for the chair in a minute. Perfect. Thanks thank you. so much. Sarah's picked up a teeny-weeny table and chair. Lorna, any idea what Sarah might do with them? New coverings, doing different colours. The, the legs on it are beautiful, so I hope they stay. <laughs> These two are teeny, aren't they? They're very cute, they're really sweet, and they are so of their time. So I'm pleased to take these two away as a pair, and I hope that I can keep them together and make them look lovely again. So, who does Sarah think can add some creative flair to this vintage pair? Designer Sarah Peterson restores reclaimed furniture using bright and bold pattern. With her clever colour choices, Sarah can bring things back from the brink and let them live on. I absolutely love my job. It's not really even a job to me, actually. It's just some place that I come to have fun. It's my happy place, really. I don't really have a routine for getting into a creative space because I think I'm actually always there, really. There's, on some kind of level inside my head, I'm always thinking of the next kind of design. Being creative and working on different projects all the time, it's a joy. Well, Sarah, you might not be jumping with joy when this dated duo arrives at your door. With two items taken care of... I'm after your kind of granny's armchair. Sarah's back on the hunt for one more thing she can take away and work on herself. Oh, look at you, aren't you beautiful? I don't think the dog's up for grabs, Sarah. Anyway, he's perfect the way he is. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Neil's arrived, but will what he's throwing out have Sarah barking up the right tree? Hi there. Hi there. Sorry, just caught my eye. What are you throwing out? Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi there. I'm Neil. Neil, how'd you do? I was just wondering what it was that was in the back of the, the car. Uh, this is an old uh, wallpapering table. Um, so my mother and my grandfather used to use it to wallpaper it. Um, my grandfather was a um, keen painter, so he did lots of artwork, so he maybe used it as a, um, an artwork work board. And it looks really sturdy. Has it got fitted legs in it? Yeah, there's legs inside. And this little catches so you can carry it with the little handle on the side. I've got one of those at home. It looks absolutely nothing like that. The quality of that is amazing. That's definitely got some age to it, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'm sure it's probably maybe 50, 60 years old. Well, I know it sounds a bit odd, but I would. I think the colour on it and the sort of detail on it is so beautiful. Can I have it? Yeah, of course. No problem at all. I'd rather <laughs> I... it was upcycled. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to take that away and um, hopefully come back and show you something amazing. You're very welcome. Look forward lovely. to seeing Thank it. Thank you. Sarah's pleased as punch with her paint-splattered pasting table. What do you think Sarah's got planned for it, Neil? I've not got a clue, to be honest. Um, maybe made back into a table, I'm not sure. It's got years of wear, it's got layers of paint, and if I get it right, I think this will create something that people will love to have back in their homes. And with that, Sarah has her items. Horse will have his work cut out, making the battered briefcase beautiful. Sarah P could be in double trouble trying to modernise the dated table and chair. And has Sarah painted herself into a corner by promising that the pasting table can produce profit? 
We'll talk about home delivery. People literally turned up here today and brought rubbish to my feet that I think has got heaps of potential. All I need is a few bright ideas. You never know, we might be in the money. With the recycling centre, three things lighter in Stockport. Sarah's sent over the itsy bitsy briefcase to the titan of technology, Horse. So, what do you think of it, Horse? I love it. It's a um, nice petite size. It's quite sturdy. Um, it's a bit battered, but I like that. And it'd be interesting to see what um, Sarah thinks about it. Hello. Horse, hi, it's Sarah. Hi, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm really well. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. I'm hoping my lovely little suitcase has arrived. A lovely little briefcase has turned up, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I thought it was very sweet, but it's just not very practical, considering its size. Yeah. Well, I thought of you because I'm hoping that you could add some electronics to make it into a neat little speaker. What do you think? Do you think it could work? Yeah, I reckon, yeah. Um, yeah, this... I mean, it stands up OK, so it... I think it lends itself to putting a couple of speakers in it. Because it's kind of all, all done through Bluetooth, if uh, you don't even need to open it, you don't need any controls or anything. So I think if I just stick the speakers on the outside, then we can fit the, the, the guts of it inside, you know. OK. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It is a really small case, though. Do you think there's enough room inside it to squeeze everything that you need in for a good sound? I've never worked on a case this size before. It's a bit of a challenge to get the, all the parts in, really, but I think it can... Yeah, we can make it sing all right. OK, well, good luck with that. So what kind of budget do I need to leave you with? I could do it all for about 2.30. Well, I'm, I'm happy with 2.30. I'll leave it with you. OK, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, horse. Bye. Thanks, bye. I think Sarah liked the plan for it. She, um, yeah, she sounded uh, enthused, so I can't wait to get cracking on it. Pulse has a budget of £230 to create a portable speaker, but he could have his work cut out trying to squeeze a big sound into that compact case. From one miniature makeover to another, in Perth, Sarah's brought along the tiny table and chair, hoping Sarah P will have some big ideas for them. She always seems to find something completely different and something that I've really, really got to think outside the box to transform, but I'm up for anything. I mean, expecting to stand at the recycling centre and find things you can actually make money out of, I think you describe me as an optimist. I'm just hoping Sarah is one of those as well, because I'm definitely going to need some help with these two. Mrs P, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. You've come heavy laden here. I've got a multi-item. Wow. OK. Sweet little table, nice legs, slightly tricky chair. Do you think they've got any potential? I think they do, definitely, yeah. I mean, I love little tables like, tables like that, that have got those atomic legs. That's just straight up my street. I did have a bit of a plan, and I was wondering about trying to make these two pieces relevant so they work well together. Mm -hmm. I was thinking perhaps we could cut the table in half maybe to create a couple of bedside tables using the lovely atomic legs at the front and perhaps hooking them onto the wall. I think that's a good idea, chopping the table in half and then adding an additional kind of level or something, you know, another kind of shelf or something on it, maybe. Sounds like a plan for that, but I'm, I do need your help on the chair. I think it's got a really nice shape. Yeah. I think it just looks a little bit dumpy, so if we can chop all the legs off and okay. perhaps give it nice long skinny legs, it might, you know, elevate it, just make it look more kind of modern and, you know, more kind of usable as well. I think that would work really well with the table. I think so, yeah. It'd be quite nice to have it, like you say, as a bedroom set. OK, and what do you think about recovering it? Either nice velvets or just some kind of nice fabrics, either colour blocking or something. We can make it look pretty again. OK, so new legs, a total recover and <laughs> mash-up of the table. <laughs> That's not going to be cheap, is it? Maybe if we say 210 for the chair, and, say, £70 for doing the table into two bedsides, so 280 altogether. I wouldn't expect to pay any less because actually there's a lot of work that you're going to have to do on that, mm -hmm. isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I think you might need a bit of luck with this one, <laughs> so on that note, have fun. I have my fingers crossed. I think I'm going to need it. <laughs> Take care. Thank Bye, you. Sarah. Thank you. This project is going to be a little bit trickier than what I'm used to, but I'm pretty confident that it should go OK in the end. 
Sarah P has a budget of £280 to totally revamp the vintage table and chair. But with so much work to do, turning this petite pair into a bespoke bedroom set could be a big challenge. With her makers pondering over their projects, back home in Sussex, Sarah's about to make a start on the pasting table. There's a lot of wallpaper paste on here. Funny, that. So, Sarah, what ideas are you bringing to this table? So it is just an old wallpapering table. It is covered in old paint and the inside is definitely in a really bad state but it's beautiful. So I've got a bold, radical plan, a pair of really smart console tables. First up, I think I'm gonna try and take it apart. It looks quite complicated, a bit like a deck chair in here. So Sarah's going to attempt to make two tables from just one ancient pasting table. However, anyone who's wallpapered knows that it does get messy. Which isn't helping Sarah. It's got wallpaper paste layers of rust and paint, and nobody has tried to take it apart for 100 years, so it's bound to be stuck. Go on, Sarah. You give it a pasting. Sweet. Well, I've got my tabletop, but wait till you see the legs. <laughs> Hope they work. Well, if your plan is to make legs from that, it's definitely going to take a lot of work. Well, I always start my projects by looking around and seeing what I've got that I can repurpose. And I think these old bits of manger might be just the thing to make some legs for my tables. Well, you wouldn't be the first to upcycle a manger. They make pretty good babies' cribs too, so I've heard. Mangers are actually feeding troughs for animals. And Sarah's cutting this one up in the hope of making a stylish set of legs. I think the bones are there. It's just trying to get this into the right condition and smarten up the tabletop so we get to kind of elegant. To try and make the manger bits more elegant, Sarah's first removing the surface rust before testing out some black wax on the metal to see how it looks. A good buff makes all the difference. That definitely is looking smarter. Happy that the wax will work, Sarah's turning her attention back to the tabletops. So although the patina and all the paint and the wear on this is lovely, there are a few bits that I think could be taken off. The old paper probably needs removing, so I'm going to try and scrape that off and then wax it so that it's got a great finish. There's a fine line between something having an aged appearance, which is in demand, or missing the look completely. Oof, and Sarah's in danger of scraping that line straight off. I've got to be really careful because actually the paint and the surface is everything about this. So I need to go gently and just remove exactly the right amount. So far, Sarah spent five pounds on this project, but if she's not careful with her scraper, her precious patina will be ruined. And with that, her chances of creating something saleable. In Stockport. Horse is already hard at work cleaning the leather on the small and battered briefcase. I've done cases before, but um, I've never done one this small. Horse's plan is to squeeze some speakers into the case to make a new chargeable Bluetooth music player. I love the fact that it's that it looks like this. I love the battered look, yeah. It reminds me of a certain bear from deepest, darkest Peru. I've had a look, I don't think there's any marmalade sandwiches in it, but there, there could have been. So now I need to work out where the speakers are going to go in relation to the rather large battery that's going to sit in there. I've got this piece here, which is a 3D printed speaker surround. I've also got um, the battery that I'm going to use. This is obviously going to be inside. Um, yeah, that, that's looking about right. Happy that the hardware will fit inside the compact case. Horse is first drilling holes where the two speakers will be positioned. That's it now, there's no going back. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's either going to be nothing or it's going to be a Bluetooth speaker. Well, let's hope for the latter. 
Next horse is positioning a circle cutter attachment on his rotary tool, which he hopes will cut out perfect circles in the case, the perfect size. That's worked a treat, I'm chuffed with that. So now the holes are cut out, I can start, I can just put the speaker in place. To attach the speakers to the case, horse is first drilling little holes around the big holes. Next, he's feeding screws through, which will affix to the new Bluetooth speaker. I'll tidy that up somehow. I'll either colour it or cut it back. Sarah did say she wanted a good sound from this horse, so how loud is it going to be? When you consider a small sort of like radio that you might have in your kitchen is about three watts, 30 watt is pretty pokey, really. OK, put it another way. If these speakers were a dog, how loud would their bark be? 30 watts is probably a Weimarana. Um, 5 watts is a sausage dog. And uh, 1K would be, like, a, a Great Dane. Right, well, that works. Um, the other important thing to do now is to just check that the that it all fits in when the battery's in the middle. Um, so let's just have a look. Uh, that sits fine. Probably still enough room um, for a, a small marmalade sandwich. I think the, the next thing to do is probably to 3D print another uh, speaker surround, because I've only got the one. So um, let's have a go at that. 3D printers work by copying an image created on a computer. I've put that onto a memory card. Um, which are then plugged into the 3D printer. The 3D printer then melts plastic filament and forms it into the three-dimensional image, layer by layer. Hold on, wait right there. I don't think that bed's hot enough, is it? But Hulse is having trouble getting his machine to work. It's not quite hot enough, I don't think. I mean, it is, it is kind of a fancy thing, but... Uh, it's a bit of a problem, and at the end of the day, I mean, it's still a printer, so I'll just have to stop it a sec. OK, but if you can't get it working, one speaker isn't going to create the Weimarana volume Sarah's expecting. In Perth, Sarah's already hard at it, stripping the existing vinyl cover from the little chair. It's all feeling a bit kind of wiggly-wobbly now. Ooh. Sarah's planning a complete redesign of the seat. And if that wasn't enough, she's also hoping to turn the little table into two bedside tables. This has been the biggest battle of my life. I cannot believe the amount of work it's been to take this chair apart. I have to cut these legs off now. Attach my new ply base. Attach my legs. Done. <laughs> To make the little chair not quite so little, Sarah will be replacing the dumpy legs with new long thin ones, similar to those on the table, to try and tie them together visually as a bedroom set. OK. So now I'm going to use this base. I'll draw around that onto my bit of plywood so that I know what shape to cut the plywood. But to attach the new legs to the chair, Sarah needs a new and strong base which she's cutting out with a jigsaw to create rounded corners. So just finish that off, fix it to the base of the chair, it's done. So now I can start putting fabric on. This feels, feels like a good time to do that. Sarah's chosen a mint green short pile velvet for the seat base which she's already lined with a fire retardant interliner. Sarah's opted for velvet with the hope of giving this seat a luxurious new look. I will just staple to the edge all the way around. Traditionally, velvet was made from silk and was very expensive to produce. But nowadays, more affordable versions are made from synthetic fibres. I am really happy that I've actually made some progress on the rebuild of the chair. But I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to concentrate on my little table and try and get something done with that as well. To create the new wall-mounted bedside cabinets, Sarah's first cutting the tabletop in half. Thank 
goodness it worked because I didn't have a backup plan. <laughs> Sarah's plan is to create a two-tiered table. So she's cutting out some plywood that will become the new lower, larger shelf. Right, I've got all my bits for my bedside cabinet. So just to give you an idea, this is my back kind of panel, which will support my top shelf. These are my little kind of front legs that support the front of the top shelf. And then the two legs attached to the front. So it would have support at the front and it would also be attached to the wall. And it would be painted and it would look a lot nicer than what it does just now. So I've got loads still to do. In Sussex, Sarah has finished transforming the paint splattered pasting table into a couple of consoles. But has she managed to harness and accentuate the patina she originally thought had value? I'm actually really pleased with these legs. I think they've turned out well and I don't think they look like a manger. Whether it's a pasting table or workbench, years of use can create character. So why not use it to make something out of character? Sarah has turned one past it painting station into two console tables. To celebrate its age and wear, Sarah has lightly waxed the tabletops to seal in the splatter effect and has added a hand painted black line boulder for definition. The rusty bars and weathered wood of the reclaimed manger have been buffed up and given coats of jet black wax and now sit on decorative feet. Sarah's also added a support beam to make her console sturdy as well as stylish. So, if you've done all your decorating, put your paint splatter on show and don't let your paste go to waste. I'm really pleased. I think I've managed to create a pair of console tables that would look great in quite a smart interior. I've got all of their character and now they are beautiful as well as useful. Hi there. As Neil was having a clear out, Sarah stopped him in his tracks. This is an old wallpapering table. My mother and my grandfather used to use it to wallpaper it. There were layers of paint built up on it. I'm sure, it's probably maybe 50, 60 years old. And that's just what Sarah loved about it. Can I have it? Yeah, of course, no problem at all. I'd rather it was upcycled. It was Neil. And you've got Sarah to thank for this one. Sarah shared photos online and the console tables were sold to an antiques and retro shop in Devon. Owner Clive is delighted with them. What I like about the console tables is the fact that they're a pair very useful decoratively, and they could really work in any room of the house. Sarah's in Musselburgh to show Neil what she's been up to and to pass on the profit. Neil, Hello. hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Not bad, thanks, and yourself? I'm very well, thank you. So I see heaps of wallpapering tables. They're one of those slightly disposable things that turn up at the recycling centre all the time. But not like yours. So it's something that your grandfather and, and your mum used, is that right? Uh, yeah, my grandfather used to use it for wallpapering and pasting, and I think my mum used to help me out as well, just as a kid, so learning tricks of the trade. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I just thought the tabletops were so lovely, so I've split them in two, and I've made them into a pair of console tables. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I have used a section of old manger that I had in my barn to make some legs for it, and it has been transformed into a pair of tables. It's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. It definitely has a, a new look. And I'm pleased to say it's, it's found a new home as well. So I have profit here for you. I have got £240 oh, wow. here for you. Gosh. So profit from the painter's table now, a pair of console tables, and that's for you. That's amazing. Thank you very much. It was very kind of you. Have you any thoughts about what you might do with it? Um, well, my uncle passed away in March this year, so um, probably a bit towards a memorial for himself. I'm so sorry to hear that, and um, great that that money can help towards that. Always a tricky time. Well, thank you very much. Nice to see <laughs> you again, Neil. Bye-bye. Cheers. Sarah's costs to create the console tables came to £5. They were sold for £245, giving Neil a profit of £240 that he's going to put towards a memorial for his uncle.
with the tables turning a profit in Manchester. Sarah's arrived to see, and hopefully hear, the little battered briefcase. Horse was struggling with his 3D printer. So has he managed to make the case musical? It was an enjoyable challenge to work on this. There was a couple of little hurdles to overcome, but it was good in the end. I was, uh, I'm chuffed with the results and I think Sarah will be pleased. I hope she is anyway. Well, I have got a real soft spot for this suitcase. I'm hoping Horse's project has gone well for him. When Sarah found it, the petite case wasn't very practical as you couldn't pack much inside. But now... It packs a punch. Horse has crammed in 30 watts of souped-up suitcase sound. His 3D printer eventually produced a speaker surrounds, which Horse has spray-painted to tie in with the tan leather. He's treated the exterior to show off the case's age and wear. And the brass hardware has been polished to perfection. The speaker can be controlled wirelessly, and Horse's addition of a chargeable battery inside makes it portable, meaning you can take your party to the park. And all of the electrics have been tested to ensure they meet safety standards. But will Sarah like it? It's time for Horse to face the music. Horse. Hiya. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it's so cute. It's dainty, isn't it? I'd forgotten how small it was. Has it been a nightmare to cram everything in there? Yeah, it took a while to kind of get to get everything in place, but just as, as, once I'd got it all placed, yeah, it all fit quite well. Oh, well, it looks super. And uh, I know it's quite small, but does it pack a punch in the tunes? It does indeed. I'll show you. Slow down what you it's really good, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's a fantastic result. That's a good volume to come out of such a tiny little thing, isn't it? Yeah, very portable as well. It's battery powered. You, you probably get a good eight hours of like loud running time with that. So it's yeah. excellent. Have you tried it? Yeah, yeah. I tried it. I left it running for a while. Eight hours at volume. Mm. How are the neighbours? They mind that? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't asked them. I'm not going to, actually. Let's not mention it, right? <laughs> I think we've got away with it. I think it looks so amazing. Uh, where did you end up on the money? 230 was where I think I left it. Yeah, still 230, yeah. That's brilliant. I am so pleased with that. Thank you so much for doing that. It looks amazing. Brilliant. Nice Thanks. to see you. You too. Thanks, love. Bye bye. 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 I'm really glad that uh, Sarah liked the speaker. The combination of the look of it is quite is quite good, and I think that the sound quality is really good. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. Well, I think Horse has done a magnificent job. He's fitted it up to make it just the best possible outcome for it. What a great result. At the recycling centre, Sarah spied Anne's itsy bitsy briefcase. Well, it was actually my father's, and it's been to Peru and back. The case had a Peruvian past. We lived there for about five years. I was about 15 months when we travelled out by ship. But Sarah wanted to give it a foot stomping future. Quite heartwarming that someone's going to do something with that, that uh, special little case. Well, Anne. Horse has sent it on a whole new journey. Sarah shared images online and the suitcase speaker was sold to a retro interior shop in Stamford. Manager Roger loves it. It's easy to carry because it's not very heavy. It's totally different and it'll get you noticed and I like that. Sarah's in Musselburgh to show Anne the super sound system and to hand over some cash. Thanks, and you? Yeah, very well. Nice to see you. Good to see you. All sorts of things have been crossing my mind since I last saw you because you were going through a pretty tough time when we met at the recycling centre, clearing out your brother's stuff. Yes. Well, I was amazed at the little suitcase that uh, was in the back of your car and it looked like such a beautiful thing and it had been part of your family history, really, hadn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's my dad's little case. I actually work with a very talented chap who's called Horse Ooh. and um, I sent it down to him and uh, he's made it into something very interesting. So I've got right. pictures here to show you. 
It now looks like this. Oh my goodness. It's been transformed. Oh, wow. oh that's so beautiful. So it is now an all singing, all dancing Bluetooth speaker. Oh, that's so lovely. He's kept all the original fittings. He has put some speakers into it and it has a fantastic sound quality. What a brilliant idea. Oh, that oh, is... That's really lovely. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. Um, wow. Those pictures have been shared and it's found a new home. And I've also got profit for you after its makeover. They have £165 here for you. No, really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's incredible. Any thoughts about what you might do with it? Um, because my brother died of a massive stroke very suddenly, I um, think I'd like to contribute it to the Heart, Chest and Stroke Scotland charity. Oh, what a fantastic yeah. cause. I'm, I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Well, thank, thank you very much. So nice thank to see you, you very again. Much. Lovely to see you again. Bye bye. OK, bye. Bye. Horses' costs to convert the suitcase into a speaker came to £230. It was sold for £395 leaving Anne with a profit of £165 that she's going to pass on to a stroke charity in memory of her brother. With the sound system selling, Sarah's back in Perth to find out how Sarah P has fared with the mammoth task of turning the old table and chair into a stylish bedroom set. This project, I must admit, was a bit more of a challenge than what I actually first thought. I thought it would be a breeze. It was a lot more work, but I love the finished item. I think they've come out really quite well. Just got to see what Sarah thinks. Well, tiny little tables and old plastic coated chairs don't normally get a moment in the spotlight. I really hope it's gone well. Individually, these dated and diminutive bits of furniture could easily have been overlooked. But together, they're hard to miss. Sarah has given the petite seat a luxurious new look. She's recovered it in short pile velvet and has opted for a bold colour blocked design of pale pink and olive green. She's also added Art Deco inspired gold piping and all of the upholstery meets fire safety standards. New atomic legs now elevate the chair and tie in visually with those on Sarah's brand new bedside tables. These space-saving units are wall-mounted and have a two-tier shelf, which Sarah has finished with gold detail on the edges and a swirly psychedelic vinyl on top. Sarah P was aiming for a sleek and stylish bedroom set. But will Sarah think she's hit the brief? Hello. 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 Gosh, Sarah, they look amazing. How did you do it? There was a lot of blood, sweat and tears on this one, I will say. But we got there. In the oh, end. dear, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I mean, the result is amazing. I mean, this chair, it looks sort of like Art Deco. It's so opulent. Yes, and that's kind of what, the, what I was going for, that kind of look and that style. So I've chopped the original legs off, given it this more kind of elegant, longer, taller legs, if you like. And so then by using all the velvets, it just gives it that kind of plush kind of feel. And then the tables, they yeah. are neat, aren't they? I think they've worked out really well. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the top table. The, yeah. the actual table was the top part. And then the bottom piece is a bit of plywood that I've cut to kind of mimic the shape, making it slightly larger. And then the legs are the original pieces as well. So it's quite nice using as much of the table as I possibly could. And have you marbled the top? So this is actually vinyl. So it's like sticky backed plastic that you can tape on. I can't believe it. I think you've done beautifully with this. It sounds like lots of hard work, though. How did you get on with money? Because we were... £70 was the original budget for table and 210 on the chair. How have yeah. you got on? 210 for the chair, so you can have the chair for 210 But with the tables, they actually took longer than what I thought, so I've had to increase the budget to £100. £50 each, I think, is absolutely fine. I think, as a collection, they look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Really good. Thank you so much. I'll uh, keep in touch. Excellent. Nice to see you, Sarah. Bye. Well, going from Sarah's reaction to my chair and tables, I would say that all my hard work, sweat and tears really did pay off. It's just great. Well, Sarah P is at the top of the recycling game. The things she does to items that were destined to be dumped, simply amazing. Hello there. <laughs> 
At the recycling centre, Sarah spotted Lorna unloading. So recently my grand passed away, so we're just clearing out her house. There were memories attached to the furniture. I loved it, because it's always got this wee hidey hole in the bottom, and I used to always hide stuff in it, and so did she. But Lorna was happy to let Sarah work on them. The legs on it are beautiful, so I hope they stay. <laughs> they stayed, Lorna, but the bedroom set was split up. The chair was bought by Mike, who manages a furniture shop in Hampshire. What attracted us to this chair is that the colours are bang on trend right now, and it's exquisitely made. And the bedside tables were purchased by Hannah, who runs a vintage shop in Norfolk. These bedside tables are swirly, beautiful. They remind me of some kind of relaxed 70s day. I mean, they are so unique. I've never seen anything like them. Sarah's in Port Seaton to show Lorna the transformations and hand over some profit. Hello. Lorna, hi, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very nice to see good. you. When we first met, I was just enchanted by your furniture. It was really sentimental for you, wasn't it? It was, it was, because we were obviously just clearing out my grand's house. So, yeah, very sentimental. Well, actually, they didn't go too far. They've travelled uh, to the fantastic person that is Sarah Peterson. And I've got pictures here to show you what she's done with Amazing. them. Amazing. The old chair, first of all, it's been given new legs <gasps> and, a, and a new look. Oh, my goodness, that's amazing. That is... I love the colour of that that like that is just so lovely and she has taken the table and the used table. the legs and turned them into a pair of bedside tables so that's so good all of your grandmother's table is still there she's added an extra bit uh, to beef it up a bit but managed to create a pair of them using everything that she was given like that is so so good amazing like I just can't go over it she really has a great finish on her products, so that's helped find the new homes, actually. I've got profit here for you as well. I've got £280. I can't believe that. Oh, so my good. goodness, that's amazing. <laughs> have you thought about what you might spend that on? Um, we're going to... My gran obviously died and it's her stuff, so we're going to have a bit of a family get-together and give her a proper send-off, so that's what the money will go towards. Oh, I think that is lovely. There's nothing better than spending time with family, so I hope you all have a, a good chance to talk about her and enjoy all those memories. Thank you so much for everything you've done. That's Pleasure. amazing. Thank Pleasure. You. Nice to catch up on Nike. Okay, Bye-bye. Bye. Sarah's final costs came to £310. The chair and bedside tables sold for a total of £590, giving Lorna £280 to put towards a family get-together in honour of her gran. Sarah saved three things from the skips. The pasting table has been split into a couple of consoles, the old briefcase has been kitted out and is ready to party. And the vintage table and chair have been given a modern makeover. While well, Sarah and Horse went the extra mile to turn my rough diamonds into items that really shine. They're off to new homes and I've handed over some money along the way.